Hello. Hello to you. You're listening to Sarah Hadland on the Spotlight Podcast. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Spotlight Podcast from londontheatre.co.uk. I'm your host, Will Longman, and this week we have another star of the West End behind the microphone for you. Some of you may know Sarah Hadland as Miranda's best friend Stevie in the BBC sitcom, and she's currently starring in the Lyric Hammersmith's production of Noises Off, which is running at the Garrick Theatre in London. I went backstage at the Garrick to speak to Sarah about starring in Michael Frayn's classic comedy, what makes it such a tricky show to rehearse, and the superstar guests they've recently had in the stalls. Described as one of the funniest plays ever. Um, yeah, I mean, that's what appealed to me, really. I think it's one of those plays that everybody is um, kind of really always talks about as being the funniest farce there is out there. And I think that's the appeal of doing it, is that it's got such a great legacy and also people that have played it. Patricia Hodge famously played Dottie Otley, who of course I did Miranda with. Um, Patricia Routledge played Dottie Otley. Um, and I'm of course not playing Dottie Otley, I'm playing Belinda. But it was um, it just, I knew about the play and I'd always wanted to be part of it. So when this opportunity came up, I was absolutely, yeah, really keen to do it. Even though recently, in the last few years, I've done quite a lot of theatre and I was kind of, the last play I did was Admissions at the Trafalgar Studios. And I was like, I'm definitely not doing any theatre after this. And then this came up and it couldn't have been more different to Admissions. So I thought, oh, actually, yeah, I will do this. Yeah. Why, why did you think you weren't going to do any theatre after Admissions? Um, I think because as for most actors, I think I'm very... You know, I've done TV and theatre and I've done quite a few plays over the last few years. So it kind of stops you from doing TV or filming. It's kind of, you know, I did before I did the um, admissions at the Trafalgar Studios, I did Dance Nation at the Almeida and trying to fit in filming. I was filming Horrible Histories, the movie at the time, and that was really difficult trying to balance the two. Um, And before that, I was at the Donmar and before that, Chichester. So I'd had like quite a run and it had worked out that I'd managed to fit filming, you know, I'd done um, hang-ups for Channel 4, I'd done that while I was at Chichester. But it's kind of, yeah, it's quite logistically, it's quite Easy. tricky to fit, fit everything in. So, um, yeah, and I think it's nice to kind of have a mixture of the two. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love doing theatre because it's you get to do such different things to maybe that you get cast on TV. Um, but And it's nice, I think, to have a mixture of the two because they're such different disciplines. Um but uh, yeah, I'd certainly felt like, right, I've done quite a lot of theatre in the past few years, which I'd loved all of it, and it'd all been really different, but I thought I'm ready to do something else now. But then when this came up, I thought, well, actually, yeah, I'll do this. So do you get the itch the other way around sometimes? If you've done a lot of TV work, yeah, you think I need to get Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think it's a mixture of the two, and I think of the two, theatre is definitely more frightening. That's the thing that, that most people find scary, um, because obviously you're in front of an audience and um, you're responsible in a much more immediate way for what you're doing because the audience are right there and they either laugh or they don't and you get that immediate response. And um, obviously when you're filming, so much of it is in the hands of the editor and how they're going to edit you and your performance and the whole end product. Mm-hmm. So you're, you've, you can only do what you can do in each take, whereas with, with, a, with a play, you're actually on stage every night and you've got to make it work every night. Yeah. So it's much more demanding in that sense, but it's much more... It's just, they're just different. I think everybody always asks you which you prefer. And I think my answer is always that you hopefully want to do a balance of the two. So you get a bit of both, really. You must be quite lucky with Noises Off because, mm-hmm. you know, it's one of the funniest plays of all time. So coming into this, you must have had a bit more confidence. Yeah, but weirdly, you sort of feel confident in the material, but then you feel pressure to make it work because you think, well, the writing's so good. If I can't make this funny, mm-hmm. um, then I'm really bad because this is a great a great script and they're great characters, so you do feel a responsibility. Michael Frayn has come to see this a lot. I mean, he came to the very first read-through we did, which was quite daunting, but he's the loveliest man. He's very sweet, and he loves this production, thank God. So he's been to see it a lot, and I think you feel like if you get his seal of approval. And Patricia Routledge came to a matinee a few weeks ago. She also loved it and was mm-hmm. very complimentary. So I think you feel... And we had Tom Cruise in on Saturday night. No way. Yes. I mean, how insane is that? We'd heard a rumour, and then his security guys came and swept the theatre, and then there he was, in the stalls. Did you spot him? Yes. He had two huge security guys either side of him, and, um, I mean, his smile is sort of megawatt, and he was laughing. He was really enjoying it. 
So yeah, put I that on the we've, we've got yeah, we've got Tom Cruise's seal of approval. approval. What more do we want? Yeah, it's a big yeah. LOL Tom Cruise. Yeah. yeah, yes, <laughs> yeah. When was the first time you saw the play? Mm. I actually saw it before it transferred at Hammersmith at the Lyric, mm-hmm. um, and um, yeah, I went to see it on the very last Saturday of the production actually. And I think it's 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 a very it's a it, yeah it's a bittersweet thing I think to go and see a production that you're thinking about joining it or not. It's always slightly weird because obviously you're looking at the part that you're you know that you would be playing, and um, also you're it's quite helpful to see the production before you go into it. But also I suppose it's that slightly weird thing of oh well you know will I what choices would I make in that part? And I think the only thing that I wanted to speak to Jeremy Herring about, the director, was just that I would make some slightly different choices and I wanted to check that the cast coming in, because there would be five of us, wouldn't be expected to do a carbon copy of what had gone before. I mean, I think with this show, you slightly have to technically, because it's so precise, the actual logistics. But in terms of some character choices and the performance, I thought it would probably be quite different... Um, so I just wanted to check that that was okay. And once I'd spoken to Jeremy, um, and also to Daniel Raggett, who actually rehearsed us in, then I felt really confident. And once I knew Lisa McGrillis was doing it, I'm a big fan of hers. Um, yeah, and I just thought, yeah, I really want to really want to be part of this. So it was helpful to see it, but also you don't want to, you kind of, you. I knew as well I wanted to do something different to what the actress had done before. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a... Yeah, like I say, kind of what what would I do with that? Because you always want to do something. Well, I think anyway, you want to bring something different to a part. So, what was the rehearsal process like? Where you're thinking in the same way of oh, what you want to bring to the character? Crazy. I mean, it's we so were, chaotic. We were very very lucky in that we did have four people that have been in it before, and oh. Lloyd, Mira, Dan, Rigby, and um, Simon Rouse were really patient and really kind, and kind of. They were, I think they were quite loath to do the sort of, oh, and you do this now and you do that now, because most actors, you wouldn't appreciate that. But we were really wanted them to do that because we needed to know in as short a time as possible because we only had three weeks mm. rehearsal. So we were desperate to kind of know what, um, what to do as quickly as possible technically. And they were really, really encouraging, but it was crazy. I mean, we did have days when you just thought, I'm never going to be able to do this because... It's not just the lines, it's the logistics of where you've got to get and things are so specific with props that your brain would just be fried by the end of the day. And it's so funny, then you suddenly get to a point where it's just second nature. Mm -hmm. Um, But having said that, you can never relax on this play because everything's... uh, Someone described it watching backstage. In fact, it was one of the understudies was watching backstage and described us as coiled springs because we often come... Well, we always come through doors sounds really weird but if you've seen the play or you will see the play it makes sense but you're sort of poised like hunched over hanging onto the handle because you're so scared you're going to miss it because a split second and you'll ruin the timing yeah so i thought that was a really good description we are literally like little coiled springs just like hanging onto the door handle which um yeah hopefully doesn't come off in your hand which has happened a few times <laughs> <laughs> and what amazed me when i saw it is that mm. all of that is written into the script like, it's all so tight yeah. in the script. That's quite unusual to see so much stage direction and so specific. But that kind of shows you the genius of Michael Frayn is that he's he knows exactly what will work. Mm-hmm. And, and it's so specific and it's so clever. And a lot of the detail the audience couldn't possibly get from watching it one time. But, you know, somebody's saying the word open and a door actually opens yeah. and things things like that that you'll never... Most audience members will never ever see or get. It just happens too fast. But when you're actually studying the script, you're like, my God, how did you work this out? Um, so, yeah, it is incredible. Um, but mad to rehearse. I mean, I actually spoke to Patricia Hodge because we were um, rehearsing a Miranda special that we're doing on that we recorded for TV. So I had the night off a couple of weeks ago to record this Miranda celebration show at the Palladium, but for TV. And I was chatting to Patricia about it and she said it's the hardest job she's ever rehearsed, but the most enjoyable to play, mm. which I would really agree with. It's 
amazing when you get a really good audience like when Tom was in on Saturday night <laughs> <laughs> you can literally see the yeah. laughs coming yeah. out of the stores yeah. <laughs> yeah. it must be really quite gratifying mm. when you come off get it right I think I haven't put oh yeah it's it. amazing but also hugely distressing when you don't get it quite right and a laugh gets missed that's really upsetting because you know the potential of the mm-hmm. play there are lots of places that should get really big laughs and if it ever doesn't that's really so because I was going to ask obviously it's very technical so yeah the question in my head was, did things go wrong? Yes. But is that mostly where things go wrong, where a joke might be missed? Um, no, no, no. We've had, we've actually on this production had quite a lot of problems with, you know, things like door handles coming off and, and props, you know, mm-hmm. we've had um, some issues with the set and things like that. So it's, it's, you put so much trust in the set on this show. You're constantly, you're running at full tilt. And if anything's not exactly right... Um, or a handle does come off in your hand or you can't get on stage because then it is very it's fraught um uh yeah I mean we had we had quite a funny one the other day I mean those are quite stressful but we had quite a funny one the other day where Adrian Richards who plays Tim the stage manager um he's got a wig on and at the beginning of act three he pops his head under the curtain and his wig disappeared and he couldn't work out what happened and it was a bit like it was so meta 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 because I was behind stage sort of waving at him and miming you know your wig's gone and he couldn't understand what I was saying then gradually he realised we were all looking frantically backstage with torches and phones but his wig couldn't find it play carried on it was like a mystery (laughs) and then right at the very end the curtain came down and his wig landed straight on his head so it got caught up in the curtain (laughs) got taken up into the flies and at the very end of the show it just happened to land on his head so you could see the audience thinking wow that's amazing they must have got Darren Brown in to work that out and we were just we were as stunned as they were so they probably thought that was the best shocked acting acting they'd ever seen but that was just what happened so you know you do have things like that but generally I think we're all so primed and all the time you're kind of on red alert because everything's so fast that if something does go wrong, everybody's as quick as they can to fix it. Like you said, it's quite meta meta. Um, I was at the press night at the lyric performance. Oh, was that when they had the blackout? Yes, there was. You were in the middle of one of these hectic scenes where you're oh, running around God. the stage, and the actual stage manager came out and went, "Really sorry, we're going to oh, have no. to stop there." And I was like, "Ah, oh, this is hilarious." <laughs> at the same time, like any other play, it'd be a little bit awkward. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, like, yeah. Everyone was really laughing. But in the back of my head, I was thinking... Is this part of the play? Well, no, I was thinking, where on earth do you reset this scene from? Yeah. Because... Impossible. Every, the, Impossible. Yeah. And the prop work as well, you have to have everything in exactly yeah. the right place. How do you remember where well, that is five minutes ago or yeah. what have you? It's it's all so continuous. It's all such a quick journey. But it's in the same way, you, you know, you, you constantly have to be on the ball and thinking. So it's kind of, it's quite a show that you get quite locked into like the minute you go up backstage that's it you're there for the whole time you're either hovering behind a door or you're on stage Mm -hmm. and the same for acts two and three so I think it's quite I like that because you're completely immersed in that world for the whole time rather than I think sometimes if you come back to the dressing room and then you might look at your phone or make a cup of tea and that's lethal because then you're kind of not quite focused on the play Mm. whereas I think when you're either on or you're waiting to go on you're really in the world kind of thing do you have a favourite moment in the play? Um, uh, I personally love um, Act 3. Um, I like it when everything's really going wrong. And um, I like uh, Richard Henders and I have a little scene where we come on with a phone and we have to try and manage everything going wrong. I really enjoy that. Um, and it's all quite, it's very, very fast and quite manic. And I really, really love that. Now, the quick fire question round is something we fire at all of our guests here on the podcast. And last week, Dear Evan Hansen, Sam Tutty and Rebecca McInnes managed to answer 10 questions each in under one minute in what was, frankly, a staggering performance. It's Sarah's turn this week, and it's safe to say that you are about to hear a wholly more relaxed effort. I'm ready. Go. Best show you've ever seen. Oh, that's impossible. <laughs> well, I've already used up all my seconds. The best show I've ever seen. One with Laura Linnean. Oh, yeah, that was amazing. Um, what was it called? My name is Lucy Barton. My name is Lucy Barton. That what? was amazing. It's your interval drink. Gin and tonic. Your stage idol. Oh, impossible. Impossible. Oh, yeah, Victoria Wood. Uh, biggest passion outside of theatre. No. 
<laughs> it is. It's not running. Uh, your first ever stage role? Um, oh, uh, I think I was Snow White. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves at Audley Edge County Primary. Uh, the last show you watched? Last show I watched? What's the last show I went to see? This is really tough because whenever I ask people, they're in shows, so they don't have time to go and see shows. I know. I can't remember. Um, it might have been this. Yeah, it probably was actually. No, I've been to see something since then. I've been to see something since then. What have I been to see? Oh no. Remember. Should we come back to that one? Yeah, let's come back to that one. <laughs> uh, what's your favourite theatre in London? Drury Lane. Uh, your favourite musical theatre song? Oh, oh, actually, Drury Lane, I say that. I do love the Donmar as well. Drury Lane slash Donmar. That's fine. Yeah. Favourite musical theatre song? Um, is that is is this um, a musical theatre song? Forget your troubles, come on, get happy. Yeah. That boy cares away. Isn't that that's in the Judy Garland musical, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That. Uh, a role you've always wanted to play? Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't mind playing Dottie Otley. Yeah. Yeah, when I'm a bit older. And then if you weren't an actor, what would you be? <laughs> I do love cleaning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cleaning. Let's stop it there at uh, 2 minutes 26. <laughs> with one pass as well. <laughs> and with help. I had help. A pass. What was my pass? Uh, your pass was the last see. show you watched. I feel like, because you go to quite a lot of press nights, don't you? Yeah. I feel like you've been at a press night. I've seen you on the red carpet at a press night I know, relatively I went recently. To see. I went to the Evening Standard Awards. Um... Kristen, what have I seen? Okay, well, while, while you mull it over, yeah. I wanted to pick up on a couple of your answers. Yeah. So one of the roles you'd like to play, you'd like to play Dottie in, yeah. in this. Yeah. How come? Um, I just would. I think it's a really great part, and I think it's, yeah. Um, I like all the actresses that have played it before. Yeah. And Patricia Routledge, I was a really, she was a real sort of, I remember going to see her do a one-woman show, when I was young um, at the Royal Exchange in Manchester and being absolutely blown away by her and I was a huge Victoria Wood fan as well but Patricia Routledge I thought was amazing and I loved her in Alan Bennett, Talking Heads and also in all the Victoria Wood stuff being when she was Kitty so I think, yeah, I would love to have seen her play Dottie Otley mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I would really love to play that part and Victoria Wood was a cracking answer for your stage idol, mm. courtesy of your sister. I know. Because <laughs> I was obsessed with Victoria yeah, Wood, yeah, and yeah, I used yeah. to write little sketches, just lifts of her sketches when I was a teenager that were just outright lifts. Um, is, she yeah. one, is she one of the reasons why you liked to get into the kind of comedy act? Yeah, definitely. She was a huge influence on me. I bought all her books of her scripts, you know, up, um, Over to You, Porky, and Men's Son, or Anything in Me Doodah, and Pat and Margaret, I thought was amazing. Um, yeah, huge, huge Victoria Wood fan. And I think she felt accessible in a way that... I loved French and Saunders as well, but they always seemed quite posh, whereas I always went with Victoria Wood. And I love the fact that she did the drama as well, like Pat and Margaret I thought was brilliant because it had that drama and comedy. I just thought she was amazing. It's funny you say that you kind of thought French and Saunders were a bit... Posh, mm. because a lot. I've always thought that a lot of comedy actors they always they always come from Footlights. They've always gone to Cambridge, yeah. and they're not always the most accessible. Yeah, they're, they're great as they are. They're, but... they're amazing. I mean, you know, Jennifer Saunders and Dawn. They're lovely, lovely people, and they're brilliant. They're amazing. But I think I probably identified more with Victoria Wood and Julie Walters because they seemed more. That seemed they seemed like people I could know or mm. meet, and particularly Victoria Woods stand-up persona. I remember going to see her at the Royal Albert Hall when I must have been still at college, so in my late teens, and right at the top. And I just remember thinking, 
you know she just seemed like someone you wanted to be friends with you knew and she could be you there was no ego or snobbery or and I like the way she poked fun at people that were thought they were better than you I thought that was great and yeah amazing I think she was I think we lost such a talent there I think she was incredible amazing she's the kind of person where you can just sit on youtube for hours and get into a hole of just watching her stuff yeah absolutely and the fact that she and especially towards the end when she was doing a lot of dramas that daniel won a bafta for the morcom eric morcom drama but also the housewife um is it housewife 59 or 49 that she did i mean she's just brilliant yeah um but i think like i say patricia routledge was a big and and an unusual choice for sort of a 16 year old girl to go and watch um, uh, Pat, Patricia Routledge doing a one woman show at the Royal Exchange <laughs> is kind of mad really but when she came to see the show it was quite emotional for me I kind of thought wow you know that's a real comedy female comedy legend for me or in my eyes it was a huge influence on me so yeah well thank you very much for my pleasure chatting. my pleasure uh, if you remember the last show you saw oh, God. email me and we'll, we'll, we'll edit it in Well, that's all for this episode and indeed for the podcast this year. Thanks again to Sarah for chatting. Uh, You can see Sarah in Noises Off at the Garrick Theatre. Tickets at londontheatre.co.uk. And thank you to you for listening. Be sure to scroll through our back catalogue and listen to some of the other guests we've had if this is your first listen. We're taking a break for Christmas, but we'll be back in the new year with some new guests from the West End. So be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Until next time, bye-bye.